friends welcome back to my channel and today we are doing our inktober november session so let me get my disclaimers out of the way and then hop into it of course before i get started i do have those disclaimers i need to get out of the way i live near a major highway here in the country of belize so you will hear those motor vehicles in my background where i live there's also a lot of wild birds you'll definitely hear them calling chirping and crying in the background one of them one of them are calling and thirdly i have dogs i have dogs my neighbors have dogs so if anyone comes in this neighborhood you will hear those dogs including my own start barking and one of them is barking right now in the distance and there's also a poor disclaimer. I have terrible seasonal or nasal allergies. I don't even know if it's seasonal, but it's terrible nasal allergies. And it's been acting up, so you will hear me sound a little nasally. I'll try to keep my sniffling to a minimum. And with that, I get back to my regular scheduled program. Okay, um, Inktober is a huge part of my art routine. Each and every each and every year I look forward to it. I actually been devising sketchbooks to for Inktober and November, but this year I decided to do it a little differently and not to do the every single 31 prompts of Inktober, but to do half of that and the other half do November. Okay, so my sketchbook for Inktober November is this. I haven't designed the cover yet. I have a lot of cover designs that are pending but I haven't selected the right one as yet so as soon as I'm finished that I probably would show that to you but for now we're going to be doing first a Inktober walkthrough and then I'll be showing you the Huevember walkthrough just a little note if you're new and you don't know what Inktober is Inktober is an annual I like to call it an annual art event. It was first developed by Jake Parker. Um, I'm sure you have heard the controversy about Jake Parker and another YouTube artist who about the whole book situation. Anyway, Jake Parker had devised this as a way to keep himself into a drawing routine. He called it Inktober. It fastly caught on and now it's a huge artist event where artists from all over the world participate in the Inktober. Each year, Jake brings out his official Inktober prompt list. However, other artists have bringed out other prompt lists for Inktober. And one of those artists I'm using right now, which is the Kelpie Spirits Inktober Witchtober prompt list. That's the one I'm using. I'm not using the official Inktober prompt list. And also, they have also other um, join channels for join channels now, join challenges for the month of October. There's Draw draw Halloween, there's Drawtober, there's Cattober, there's Witchtober. So there's so many other prompts that you can do for the month of October. Each prompts feature a 31 day challenge. Basically, for each day of the month of October, 31 days, the, these prompts will give you a word or a phrase to draw from. And I'm using Kelpie Spirits Natural Witches prompt list. And check her out. She's over at Instagram. I will link her Instagram handle in my description below because this is not my prompt list. This is hers. And I'll also show a pic of her um, witch list. Sorry, her prompt list in, on this video right about here for you guys who wants to follow. I'm also doing a few from Cat Vox Marie's Cat-tober prompt list. And yeah, um, Cat Vox is a YouTuber also that I follow and she brought out a prompt list for this October. It's all about cats. So I decided to use some of her prompt list as well for Inktober. We'll be putting, um, cat box instagram handle in my description below is if in the event you would like to also follow her now let's go into my inktober huevember walkthrough okay so huevember like inktober is also another artist event um i actually find myself 
this year looking forward more so to Huevember than Inktober. And Huevember is a little different. Huevember gives you hues, colors that as prompts for to inspire you to draw. Now, the rules of Inktober is that it only allows you to use ink mediums, including watercolor paints. And but they have expanded that now. A lot of people just basically use whatever medium they desire. I've seen people do Inktober with digital art. I've seen people do Inktober not only with pen and ink, but markers. I've even seen some people use color pencils, believe it or not, especially the Derwent Ink Tense Pencils. So basically, it is a broad spectrum that unlike Inktober that comes with this rule, you have to use inks. Huevember, say, you know what, use whatever medium you want. Just, pick to, just stay to the particular color that is being featured for that day. Like Inktober, it gives you 30, 30 different hues for the day of October, for the day of October, now for the day of November. And because November have 30 days, there's 30 different hues or colors for you to use. This year, I decided to do my own Huevember um, challenge. And this is it. Sorry for the numbers. Um, actually, this was inspired by the Ahuhu color markers that I have here. And I've used those to select the different hues that I want. I did feature this um, on my Instagram channel. On my Instagram channel now. On my Instagram. I will also link that in the description below. That if you want to follow along with me or do the hues along with me, no problem. And unlike the official Huevember um, prompt colors, I am only using 16 colors. So it's not... 30 colors it's only 16 the same thing I did for Inktober I didn't do the full 31 day challenge I think I only did 14 so it's very 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 limited the reason why I decided to do only 14 prompts for Inktober and 16 prompts for Huevember is because at the end of Inktober a lot of times you feel exhausted I mean drawing for 31 days is an exhausting feat so I decided to limit that to half or about half and then put the rest of energy into Huevember, which was actually very good for me. And I'm done. Why am I still blabbering? Let's go into that walkthrough. Let's go into Kelpie Spirit Witch, um, Natural Witches Prompt List for Inktober. And her first day was Lavender. Let me bring this closer. With this, I was just thinking of a witch walking through a lavender field. Um, and I think I nailed it. Somehow her hand here just kind of looks a little off to me. But it's something I am in the making of perfecting. So let's hope that by the time I get towards the end of the sketchbook, I have a better way of drawing hands. I love how I start drawing feet now. I'm actually drawing shoes on feet. And I'm putting more movement into the clothing, which is also very good. I'm thinking more about structure and flow of the body. Day number two. Um, Kelpie Spirits for day... Was it day two? I think, yeah. No, day three, sorry, was actually dandelions. I actually didn't know how a dandelion flower looked, as you can see here. I didn't know how the dandelion flower looked, and after doing some research, I saw it kind of look like these, so I just thought about these little black spots here, sorry. Day two was the Husta Witch from Kelpie Spirits, and I love this. I love the whole, I did this flow, and yeah, I'm trying to work on these hands. I'm really, really trying to work on these hands, guys. Day four is rosemary, and rosemary happened to be one of my favorite spices. And yeah, I actually enjoyed doing that. I love how I have her posed. I love how I did the nose. It's not how I do normal noses, which is really, really good and challenging. Um, 
the Venus flytrap witch. She actually challenged me. Um, I'm not sure yet, but I, I'm kind of disappointed in how I had the vision in my head for this one, but I, I somehow I think the execution was all off. But yeah, here, here you go. This is day six. It's called the Acorn Witch. And I was just thinking of this little acorn here. She's old, scrunchy. Whenever I think about acorns, I think about something very scrunchy. I know this video is going to be so long. Um, this is the bamboo witch. And bamboo is just so long and stocky. So I wanted to do this thing so long and stocky. But I think I kind of made a mistake here with her rear leg. It's not the color I want it to be. I should have gone better. This actually here inspired the Hugh Vember approach, which I'll show you in a minute. This here is the hibiscus witch. And yeah, uh, I've been trying to work with this bean shape here, as you can see here. And I think I've learned the execution. The one that surprised me the most was actually the rose witch. And that's because... I wasn't expecting this result. I mean, this she's so beautiful. I wanted to go with a fair skin witch with a rose dress, and I think I nailed it. I couldn't believe I was able to obtain this fair for skin. 10, we're looking at the succulent witch, and I like how I did this, but just the middle succulent leaves here. I didn't appreciate how that came out. And... Uh, the last day I did for Kelpie Spirits was the 11, which is the Mandrake, lit, Mandrake Witch. And I didn't want to go with the traditional Mandrake from Harry Potter. I wanted to put it more into my interpretation. And hence why I have this witch looking like this. Now here is from Cat Valk. And this is her day 11 prompt, which is called Food Cat. Don't ask. Food cat, I was just, I wasn't thinking of a cat with food. I'm actually thinking the cat of food and not any food. I thought it was ironic to have a hot dog cat. And I just love how this goes and flows. It's so gorgeous. The next one I have here is the lunar cat. I was trying to go for Kat Vaughn's inspiration because she has this amazing way of drawing lunar inspired pieces and I was trying to go for her but somehow somewhere around here I just fall a little flat. I had it in my head just the execution didn't come out the way I wanted to. This is her day 23, her fairy cat and I think it's self explanatory, a cat that is a fairy. And I think I was getting a little better with that approach. And my final one is day 31, which is the pumpkin cat. And yeah, I love this. I, I, it was, I didn't go into it with a lot of thinking. I just basically did it and I just love how it came out. Okay, so now I should say that my Inktober piece was done with ink. It was done with the Ahuhu water brush pens here that I have. I rarely use these. I think I did a review of this earlier in this channel's history. Please check the um, library and you will see it right there. And this is what I did Inktober with. And that's one of the reasons why I love these prompt challenges because it's allow me to use these mediums which I rarely use and allow me to reconnect with them. So I use this for Inktober and I use these or this here for November. If it, this um, video goes more than 15 minutes. Uh, this is the November, my November day one. I'm highlighting this hue here. I was just thinking of a beautiful sunset sunrise kind of thing with the little black cat just watching it and I see a piece I did not color properly so let me just put that in there and yeah this was what i was thinking um i have a numbering system for my ahuhu markers here because i have basically i think it was the first set i think the newer set of these now come with a little number but mine that i have at the time did not so i use my um little engraving tool here and i kind of engraved a number on it and that's the number i have here which i called it number 27 
So yeah, I was just thinking of a little sunset. Also, I had rules for my Huevember. And my Huevember rules are that I was going to use the hue, which is feature the hue, which is in this case, this yellow looking hue here. And I'm only allowing myself to use four other colors. And those four other colors are the black and the three grays that come along with the 60 set of hoo hoos that I had. So those were only the colors I'll be featuring in this um, for this challenge. Now you can make up whatever challenge you want, whatever rules you want. There is no limitations on my Huevember prompts. All I ask is to feature the hue. That's all I ask. Just feature the hue that is selected and hashtag me at made by Don Art on Instagram in it. Okay, I like to see what you guys come up with. I know people out there are way more talented than me. Um, this is another color. This is what I call number 29. It's a beautiful orangey kind of yellow orangey kind of color. And for this, I was just thinking of a little boy running with a ball. I know, that's very basic. For the orange color now, I was thinking of a lady in a bath suit sitting with an orange. What I like about Hue Vember, it, it allows me to use these pens in different ways. Like for instance, here you, here you have the orange. I color it plainly with the orange color. But then for the hair, I use hatching. And then I kind of dilute it here to make the bath suit. So it allows me to be inventive with the pen same thing here I was just thinking of someone with just really red lips and that's what I did here um, for this hue here I was thinking of uh, the feet of a corpse I know right feet gives gave me as much trouble as drawing hands I don't know what is it with these appendages they're just giving me a lot of problems here, this one surprised me, and the reason why this one surprised me was because I actually had to go through the entire motion of drawing art basics and illustration basics. So I started this picture here with a stick figure, and then within that stick figure, I put the line of action, and then from there, I started to fill it out because I was actually going for a salsa dancer, and in this case, I actually featured two hues rather than one. And as you can see here, I features I featured those two hues. So you can actually combine hues together. finish um i just put this little sketchbook underneath here to kind of like level my sketchbook out a little bit while i was working um yeah as you can see this is how she turned out yeah. i love this drawing style it allows me to do a lot of expressions now i have another piece all pre-lined all pre-drawn up let's get lined up um but before i get to this piece here let me look at this Again, just playing with different hatching, cross hatching. One of the interesting thing about this is it was one of the first times, as you notice, I just play with light and shadows when it came to the hue, as you can see here on her pants, which is really, really nice. Now I have another piece here to do, so let me hop into it and uh, let's go. Okay, I am finished. Um, there was a bit of warp in here, but apart from that, I know when once it's dry, it's gonna flatten out. And yeah, eraser that. My little bunny is finished. Kind of like these little fuzz balls. 
And my final uh, picture here is this, the girl with a little fuzzball, and that's for my day 16. As you can see, I did all the hues and everything that I've showed you guys. And yeah, I just had so much fun doing this. I wish I could be a little more excited. I am. I am so super excited for the medications that I am on for my allergies. It usually leaves me in a fog and the fog is kicking in now. Beside the fog, it's about to rain. It's just, just a gloomy day all around. But I am super, super pumped. I love November. I was so excited. If you guys noticed the dates, a lot of dates were basically the same day because I it was so inspiring. It just motivated me to draw. I love working with these hue. It was only 16 colors. And as you can see, I mixed it up. I matched it up. You know, I put two colors together featuring two hue. Um, in some cases, if you guys want, you can minus a hue or two to make it into eight. It doesn't matter. Just have fun and creative with the prompt. It'll be on my Instagram if you want to join in on the fun. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey. And with that said, I say... Stay safe, stay blessed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.